Hi guys, what's going on and welcome back to another video on Conqueror's Blade. So today I thought we'd go back and have a little bit of a revisit on Palace Guards. Obviously they got a pretty significant, well, pretty significant, very significant buff um, a couple of months ago, perhaps, perhaps a bit longer now. Um, and I did a video on them then, really enjoyed them, really good change unit. But since we've spent a bit of time kind of revisiting things like the Paladins and stuff, it kind of seems remiss to not go back and also have another bit of a look at these Palace Guards because they are undoubtedly a very good unit. So what are they like? What are they about? What abilities do they have? Well, let's head over and have a look at some of their abilities first. Initially, just on their core stats, they've got some really decent health ball, just over 11,000 hit points, decent armor stats, and I'm on the top line. So there's two veteran C lines to pick from. And I'm not going to tell you one is right and one is wrong because I think it depends somewhat on your playstyle. There's definitely going to be people in the comments to this video which will vehemently tell you you should go bottom and vehemently tell you you should go top. And I think it kind of depends on how you want to play them. Maybe a good analogy would be Paladins and Stalwarts. Two different units, obviously both very good. I don't like my Stalwarts, not really. I don't think they're a lot of good doesn't fit my playstyle, I don't get on very well with them, but Paladins, much more aggressive, more about the damage, less about the defensive ability, fits my playstyle perfectly. And the same is very true for these Palace Guards. For me, I find their defensive attributes are fine, when you combine that with some of their abilities as well, and I've got an Ironside Doctrine on them, that is more than sufficient for me, so I'd rather have extra damage. You know, that 10% that damage increase on the end of the line is really nice, also got damage dealt to infantry um, increase, a bit more shield bash, etc. Double strike, slashing damage. This, for me, is more important than the extra defensive stats. On the bottom line, if you're a very defensive player, you know, you're know you going to be getting that 20% defense increase on the final node. Certainly not to be sniffed at. So, veteran lines, top is aggressive, bottom is defensive. Pick according to how you want to play them. In terms of the abilities they get, obviously, they get a charge. It's a bog standard charge, same as everything else. Actually does a reasonable chunk of damage. It's not as good as Paladins, but it's pretty decent. Beyond that, we go on to Guard the Throne. This is their main reworked ability that they got when they got buffed um, a few months ago. So in essence, when you press this, the unit sort of hunkers down, sort of uses their shield, almost becomes a little bit like a mini stalwart. But more importantly, they get 5 second CC immunity. So, for example, if you're your unit and a musket's just about to throw a bomb at you and you press it, or a short sword's just about to use their ult on you, you press this, then they'll be immune to that knockdown because they're completely CC immune. They also uh, adopt almost like, it's almost like a mini brace. They don't take a lot of damage, they just stab around the edge of their shields. And then when you press it for a second time, they get almost like a mini condotary shock attack. They sort of rush forwards, knock back enemy units, get a little bit of extra damage, makes them really quite effective, really nice ability, and the unit is kind of centred on this ability, or at least in my experience it is. And obviously my iron sides is coming from the Doctrine, which we'll go and have a look at now. Doctrine-wise then, a few bits of interesting stuff. I've got the charge cooldown on them. Um, you could arguably replace this with more of a defensive Doctrine, something like this, which gives that extra piercing and slashing defence. They do have a reasonably long charge cooldown if you don't use it, but I don't use the charge cooldown on the Paladin, so there's certainly an argument for swapping that one out, I think. Beyond that, Iron Sides, giving them that extra piercing, slashing, and blunt defense, 150 points, and definitely worthwhile having. Um, just got to remember to turn it on. It's probably my biggest problem. Beyond that, the increased slashing and blunt damage. They do get a shield bash, so that extra blunt damage is quite nice. I put on that extra uh, piercing defense, which I'm not quite sure why I've got that on there. Well... So it'll be a good start, won't it? Let's improve the unit already. As we can say, you can see that I definitely uh, don't do a very good job of necessarily planning these videos out sometimes. But there we go. <laughs> I don't know why I've got that piercing defense on there when I've got one of them spare. Um, and the increased block as well, which is kind of nice to have. So that puts them in a pretty decent way. Kit cost-wise, what are we looking at? 2,800. Actually reasonably priced for heroic every unit. Not too bad. And actually now with the increased Doctrines, we're getting our piercing and slashing defense that little bit higher as well. So let's go and hop into some battles with them, see what we can do and see who we can attack. So we kick things off on Orgolia. 
Initially, still not got any siege towers in on this map, but actually got a little bit of pressure in on the A point. And a few people sort of were saying in chat, there's actually not really that much stuff there. So I'm thinking about, well, maybe we can actually have a bit of a punt at this and, and, and give it a bit of a go. So bringing up the palace guards. Um, initially, slightly hesitant, too hesitant, as always is the case with me. But then we see that, that friendly longsword actually gets in with his ult, knocks a lot of the stuff down, and I think, oh, well, you know, sod it. Come on, then. Get the unit round. I go straight into the sort of the defensive mode. This maul causes me a bit of a headache, but we manage to kind of get him driven back. Friendly berserkers come in behind, and then the unit is just holding in this defensive stance until we can sort of get enough of the stuff cleared, and now I'm going on the attack with them. Using the charge then to break the defense of these other unit of palace guards, and it cuts through it fairly effectively. So I sort of use the two key as, as a brace when things are quite bad. And then if the situation starts to improve, I'm almost counter-attacking by pressing two the second time to use it like that. These enemy paladins coming down here I thought might be an interesting opportunity, but the palace guards are not a fast unit and I didn't want to go running up there into what was quite a large collection of stuff, so I kind of thought better of it and decided to pull them back down. But it did mean we were able to capture the A point fairly early on in the fight, and I was kind of pretty pleased with that. A little bit of stuff starts to push up to the gate, but really I'm kind of looking at some sort of siege tower opportunities. Although currently, nothing has yet landed at the wall. So I get the unit to the supply point, and we've got a little bit of a wait. I know I'm kind of thinking about having a little bit of a treb on those archers, but they moved before I commit to it, so I ended up not going for it. I ended up thinking about the same thing over on this side, but again, they kind of managed to relocate themselves pretty quickly, so I didn't bother actually uh, 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 going through with it. And then we're basically waiting for this siege tower to land, which it does. And in this case, I'm just interested in this supply point. What that ult was though, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> Good job, Evo. But yeah, it's this supply point here I'm interested in. Bush into the monks. I really probably didn't even need to use the durability there. You know, monks are not going to be putting up any opposition to a unit of palace guards in this sort of situation. So we get through. There wasn't much opposition. And that means we cap this supply point. And once you've got this supply point, realistically, that means the B point is already yours. Because you've now got the the ready supply of fresh troops. It's more important to get the supply point first, in my opinion, than it is to get the B point, because once you've got supply, it's easy to take the B. So anyway, as you'd expect, we're now gonna go to the B point. A Little bit slow, this unit. It's kind of tempting to almost put a um, epic sprint doctrine on them, just to give them that little bit of a speed boost. It certainly feels like they need it at some point. I think they've got the four base movement speed. It does feel slow. A few little rat and marksmen having a bit of a pop through the gateway. Obviously it's going to be a bit of a pain, but against a fairly heavily armoured unit uh, like these palace guards, then realistically the armour penetration value of those Rattan Marksmen isn't enough, it's going to be massively effective. So we come up against some Imp Pike. Well that's not a problem, as we know, the 2 skill gives immediate 2 second CC immunity. I could have perhaps pushed slightly further up, but we're actually picking up kills pretty reasonably, and once we've got the advantage and the um, Imperial Pike Batter stopped, we just press the 2 key again, and they basically go on the aggressive attack in that sort of mini shock attack type thing. And it works just fine. But now we've got unit of grey hair garrisons. Followed by, um, is that some pikes behind, some fortabrachios and another unit of palace guards. I go for the charge. Our friendly team had really done a good job of softening up these grey hairs. And it meant that the charge pushed through. But as my charge ends, I press the two keys. So that puts me into the brace. So we're punching through with the charge and then immediately going into that defensive brace. Unfortunately, not to be over. But just managed to cut this short bow with the old <laughs> So yeah, charging through. Then I'm using the two skill to kind of go into that protective stance. And then because we'd got the upper hand, we'd done enough damage with the charge, the friendly guys with the Azaps and the rest of the stuff were pushing through. Then pressing the two key again to go on that, that counter-attack, to get the unit to push forwards and start to engage the enemy. At this point, I could have pushed on, maybe to the walls of the D point. Don't think I'd be wanting to go to the way of the C wall, particularly with a bit of stuff, this cheeky little enemy Pike Hero, who actually manages to get away with it. Damn him. But I decided to go back to the supply point. The unit's pretty badly damaged, and they really do need healing up. Again, this is where the slow movement speed is kind of a bit of a punishment. And because if you just saw on that tactical overview map, there was actually quite a bit of stuff from enemy heroes sitting above the wall, I decided to go back with the unit. I was a little bit uncomfortable that 
an enemy hero could just jump off the wall. It wouldn't be the first time I've sent a unit to a supply point, a hero has jumped off and then killed them on the way. But then I slowly make my way back, just waiting for the unit to keep with me. I'm, I'm sort of trying to keep my eye on them so they don't get ambushed or killed. And we make our way back to the B point, because I want to get up and onto that D point wall. That's why I'm thinking there's a lot of enemy defence at the C point. And I don't think I'm going to be getting through there. So we come up, I commit the unit to the ladders. We've got some friendly stuff up there already. And I'm feeling confident enough that I could at least get up. Well, that may have been a mistake, but let's see. There's some enemy pavies down the bottom, which is a bit of a pain. But as we come up, we're really being threatened already. I try and get a little bit stuck in, but we've got um, enemy iron caps. We've also got enemy unit of paladins. It's a lot of stuff and quite a hard selection of units to deal with. I'm trying to group my unit up initially, I wanted to get them all up the ladders. I then make a mistake here. As we push up, I activate my defensive ability on the hero, not the unit. And that was a mistake because the paladins didn't take the fight. And yeah, definitely regretted that. I should maybe have charged there as well. I didn't. Again, I was kind of thinking, well, we've got more stuff on the way. Maybe I'm just trying to hold this staircase because we're in a very good defensive position. But what I should have done was push forwards and force the engagement. We had the advantage. They were already damaged, already injured. And in a narrow environment like that, the palace guards are going to work quite well. But anyway, I didn't. A little bit of friendly stuff turns up, but I'm really the only melee unit here. But if you've just noticed, the team is actually starting to get into position to pressure the D-point from the other way, on the ground. And so really, I've got a little bit of an obligation here to help but I'm a bit nervous about the amount of stuff that's still on the supply point. A little bit of grey hairs looking to try and block off the stairs, but as our team starts to pressure the D point more, um, most of the stuff on the supply point kind of backs off and opens up an opportunity a little bit for me to try and take the fight to these Imperial Javelineers. We do take a volley, which is a little bit painful, but not too bad. And I thought these Javelins were going to run here, um, which is why I cancelled the charge. But since they didn't, we go for it. And actually... We beat these pretty easily. Get stuck in, go for the defensive, go for the iron sides, set them on the attack, and they deal with them pretty convincingly. I almost get myself killed, just managed to get out of the way in time, um, and I go for a little bit of a heal on the Kana. Yeah, the palace guards are always going to beat Imperial Javelineers in this sort of situation. Unfortunately, a short bow is just about to shoot me. There we go. Now things are not looking so good. The enemy have dealt with our team on D, and we've got quite a bit of stuff coming back. I'm still on cooldown for a few more seconds. I'm trying to buy a little bit of time. I try and move in to support those grey hairs, but we've got them all behind us. We get sidecharged by a unit of paladins, and unfortunately, I get caught out of position and killed. The unit did well, but we just got two outnumbered there at the end. But still, 120 unit kills. For our second clip, we are back on, you guessed it, Orgolia. I don't know why all my palace guard clips seem to be from Orgolia, but there we go. Um, this time we're defending. And the enemy were pushing from that supply point, which, you know, I said it is so important to capture in that first clip, to the B point. But actually, it kind of presented a bit of an opportunity for us to kind of, like, cut through their lines. Most of the enemy troops have already pushed forwards to the B point, and that kind of enabled me to sort of cut through them. I then had a little bit of a moment of cowardice here, which seems to be so often the case in my videos. I didn't like the fact the wall wasn't down. Because it meant there's basically no escape from that B point. They have captured A and the ram is going to be at the gate soon. So I think they're going to be coming through the main gate. And I'm not going to be able to escape because I'm going to be sandwiched behind. And there's no sort of side way to get out like you normally would. But the rest of the team is not so cowardly and actually goes for it. Makes the right decision. And so I decide to follow up, which I'm glad I did. And as we come up, wait for the unit to catch up as always. But when it finally moves its slow ass into position, we just go straight in for the charge. And this unit actually has a really decent charge. You can see how much damage we get in the charge there against ASAP, so equivalent tier units. And it punches through them quite nicely. And I just go straight into the defensive stance. And it's like bracing. It really is. Um, and it works fine. Deals with the ASAP just fine. We have enough team support. I don't need to follow up with the counterattack because I don't want to be going up the siege tower. But with everything on the B point dead, kind of what I thought might happen, happens. The enemy is pushed through the main gateway. I thought about going up a ladder, but actually as some of the friendly heroes were looking at pushing back towards the gate, I'm kind of interested, I'm, I'm, I'm keen to have a go. These Imperial Pike Guard go on a bit early, don't use Imperial Pike Guard against the hero. I thought the charge was going to end by the time I hit, but actually it didn't. 
but in reality, it really didn't matter. Our charge was still enough to smash through that Imperial Pike Guard. A unit that I think has really suffered a lot in the last couple of seasons. Everything seems to count at Imperial Pike Guard now. I feel like they've really kind of come a little bit off meta, particularly now we've got Madals for anti-cavalry as well. But that's a topic for another video. We come up to the C point, grab a very cheeky shortbow kill, and just start to deal with some of the stuff we've got here. Um, go through this musket. Unfortunately, don't quite manage to get him as he managed to hop off the back wall. But since we've got some condos coming over, I wanted to go and go and deal with them. A little bit of a crappy charge. It just wasn't quite far enough around that corner. But we can still help push through and we can deal with the remaining stuff fine. And, you know, in that brief period we've gained, what, 60, 70 kills? Just in those few engagements? This unit can do quite a bit of damage very quickly. And in almost all those fights, I felt like the extra damage has been the way to go. You know, we've gone on the aggressive line, not the tanky line, and we've still not lost a single single model. They're all still alive. So I go and send them back to the supply point, and for some reason decide to heal right in front of this watcher. But it's fine, the friendly stalwarts look after me. And this section of the wall finally goes down. Okay, so I think at this point, B point is starting to get into trouble. A lot of stuff going that way now. I don't think it's worth really saving. These paladins um, go in and try and effectively perhaps do what I did a couple of minutes ago. But the problem is it's not the same team support here. And there's a lot of stuff on B and they're about to cap B. And once they cap B is what they're going to do is they're going to come straight back this way into that line of paladins. I tried to help out a little bit of my hero but I'm not prepared to sacrifice my life to try and assist there because I think it's already a lost cause. And then I come calling obviously my unit of palace guards back which obviously takes them a while because they are slow as. Now the decision is are they going to push me on the C point or are they going to go D? And I'm a bit too slow to react here. Initially, you know, cavalry, condos who come through the gate, few enemy heroes looking. I think it's C point they're going to be pushing. And I want them to cut the stairs and I'm going to push in on the flank. But actually, I guess we have too much stuff here. And they start to go D. But I see on the minimap a couple of enemy stuff coming up the wall. I go and have a look, but it's actually only two enemy heroes. I realise that I'm making a mistake and that they're pushing D and I've taken too long at C. But realistically, I've already lost a lot of time now. And it's a slow unit. These Azaps go in, but unfortunately get, they get stopped basically by a musket bomb um, against this other unit of palace guards. I go for a long distance charge and then start to get stuck in a little bit with my hero. Um, start to get a little bit of damage in, but as the unit smashes through, you know, they deal with the stragglers quite easily. Get sort of 15 kills in the charge. And I'm pushing on, I'm going for D by this point. Definitely tunnel vision Evo. The Azaps decide that this is a fight they definitely don't want, which I can hardly blame them. And the D point's done for at this point, but I just want to attack now. Because <laughs> I was kind of annoyed at myself for spending too long on C when I think I could have saved it. But get some halberdier sergeants. I should have hung back a second or two for the um, charge, so I could charge into them. We kind of go to town a little bit on them. We kind of get away with it, but it's this double musket combo that really does for me, because they're really getting a lot of shots on me. And that's taking my health down, and I'm struggling as a hero to stay alive. I'm trying to keep myself moving as we deal with these, these units. Go for a charge to finish off what's left of a little bit of a halberdier sergeants. But we've got more enemy heroes, more enemy units powering in. And of course, my poor little palace guards aren't superstars, and they do eventually get flattened. But we still picked up well over 100 kills with them. And it kind of gives a little bit of a highlight of what they can do as a unit. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, do let me know what you think in the comments down below. And of course, subscribe to the channel for a lot more Conqueror's Blade content. Thanks for watching, guys, and I shall see you all on the next one.